Leonard, Michael, Don, and Peter, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. You got it. Thanks for being on. How weird has this season been for you? I mean, very rarely do you see players in football traded, and you were traded, and you were traded between two teams that share the same stadium. So how strange has it been? Um, it's been a little strange, but, you know, today you see trades occur more often in the football. Um, I don't think it's as rare as it used to be. Um, but I think this is the first time the Jets and Giants have ever traded before. And, uh, you know, that's been kind of an easier transition for me because I've, I've already been playing in the same stadium and all that type of stuff, you know. Now, they, they work out in different places, but did you have to move? No, I didn't have to move. I was actually probably about 10 minutes um, further away from the Giants than I was with the Jets and just, uh, just the opposite direction, basically. So was it difficult uh, to get dealt? Because there's that, well, a team wanted me, but then there's that feeling of, you know, the team that drafted me traded me away. So was that difficult for you to reconcile, you know, getting sent mm -hmm. away from the team that actually selected you? Um, you know, there's definitely sometimes feelings involved as much as you don't want to say that, you know, it's a business and you, you try to keep it business. And, uh, you know, at the same time, you know, I was happy that the Jets brought me in and uh, started off my career. And, uh, you know, I was happy that they drafted me. But at the same time, like you said, the Giants wanted me. So, uh, you know, there was that in, in the back of my mind as well that, you know, clearly this team wanted me if they went out to trade for me. So, What, did, what were your thoughts on the Jets' uh, defense uh, when you left up till that point? Uh, I mean, I thought the defense was great. Uh, you know, Greg Williams was, uh, you know, a great defense coordinator. He's one of the best coaches I've ever played for. You know, I don't really have anything bad to say about him. Now, I'm, I'm going to give you a little advice, Leonard. We hardly know each other, and I know you have an agent. But you have all the leverage in your world, in the world. All the leverage. The Giants <laughs> traded for you. You're going to be a free agent. They have to sign you. Otherwise, they wasted two draft picks. Ask yeah. them for the world. You got it. <laughs> Buddy, you got it. Yeah, I mean, I've been hearing talks about it, but at the same time, you know, I still want to show, show them what I got. And, uh, you know, so far they've been impressed with how I carry myself around the building and, uh, you know, how well I've been fitting in with the rest of the guys on the team. And, you know, I'm definitely trying to be one of the leaders on, on, this, uh, on this group uh, eventually, you know. All right, you've only been with the Giants a short time, but, you know, the defense seems to be a bit of a work in progress. Difficult mm -hmm. to get off the field on third down. That's been a problem even well before you got here. Are you seeing any signs of improvement coming out of this bye where, where fans can feel a little bit better about what you're doing on the defensive side of the ball? Yeah, I mean, I definitely see a lot of promise. Um, you know, what I'm seeing is a team that, um, you know, plays very well for the most part. And there will be like one or two plays that gets away from us. And it's like a small technique issue or, you know, just a, a error or something like that. And then the other team will convert on third down. So, you know, first and second downs, I think the team is doing a good job. Um, it's just getting off the field on third downs. We'll, we'll work on it. How weird was it? For you, Leonard, to play against the Jets, I mean, so soon after you, you were teammate with these guys and you're playing against them. Yeah, I mean, it was really soon, a uh, quick turnaround. Um, it was interesting, for sure, to say the least. Um, you know, but at the same time, I still treated it like a game. You know, I didn't, I wasn't treating them like they were my friends or anything like that. After the game, you know, we we said hi to each other and all that type of stuff. But between the whistles and, you know, while we're on the grass, uh, you know, we, we played ball. Is it true, Leonard? We're talking with Leonard Williams at the Giants here on the Michael K. Show. Is it true that uh, you hit Sam Darnold and he cursed at you? <laughs> uh, no, it was funny because I was hitting him a few times, getting close to him, almost got a sack on him a few times. And then uh, I finally was like, dang it, Sam, like, hold on to the ball. Like, you know, I didn't say just <laughs> dang it. but <laughs> And then that's when he said something back, and we were just, like, laughing about it. Well, but, he, uh, he did. He, we have a weekly with him every week, and, and, and he he does speak quite highly of you and said he's uh, you guys are pretty tight. Um, what's your relationship like with Sam, and, and what have you thought about his development over the season? Oh, uh, yeah, we've had a pretty good relationship. You know, we went to college together. Um, you know, I was a lot older, and he was a red shirt at the time, but... Uh, you know, since he came in at the Jets, you know, he's been nothing but a professional. And, uh, you know, I like the way he carries himself, and he's definitely getting better and better. So, you know, I wish him the best of luck. What was your thoughts of Adam Gase while you had a chance to be coached by him? I mean, it was a, it was a good program, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, it was a good time there. I definitely enjoyed my time at the at the Jets. But, um, you know, at the same time, I'm, I have uh, you know, such a quick turnaround, I, I quickly had to forget about where I was and move on to where I am. And, uh, 
you know, that's with the Giants now. So I've been more trying to just focus on going forward. You know, it's, it's so interesting to me, you know, when people are trying to judge Leonard Williams, they're, they're talking about the lack of sacks. But then yeah. I look at it, and that that's not your job. Yeah, you'd like to get to the quarterback, but there are other responsibilities tying people up, stopping the run. So do you think that's an unfair way to look at you while he hasn't had sacks? Um, I mean, I would say so just because, you know, I – I, I try to look at you know other top D linemen in the in the league you know excluding Aaron Donald he's a a freak you know he's mm -hmm. a little different but um you know not all D tackles are getting ten plus sacks a year it's like you're getting around like six to ten if that and um, you know I feel like I've I made it to the Pro Bowl I've um, you know I've done a lot of good things and I'm definitely good in the run game and I get a lot of quarterback hits and I get a lot of pressure. And, uh, you know, that causes interceptions, that, that causes frustration in the quarterback. I think it causes a lot more problems to the offense than, uh, than, than fans realize. And, you know, I think it's just such a fantasy world league where – you yeah, know, so many so many fans have like fantasy football where if the stat isn't on paper and they don't see it in the fantasy points, then then they don't see you doing anything. You know what I mean? I'm curious. Obviously, the Giants saw something that they like to make the deal. When you got there, did they say keep doing what you're doing, or did they want to tweak some things that you were doing? Um, I mean, they haven't talked to me about tweaking anything. They just told me, you know, keep being the player that I am and just keep trying to be better, which is what we try to do every year. You know, you always want to be better than, than you were yesterday. And, um, you know, what I like so far about what they've been doing with me is they move me around a lot and uh, trying to put me in, in, in great positions to uh, get after the quarterback and just be my best on the field. Now, before we let you go, I'm curious. Um, <clears throat> it's such a violent game, and you guys have to control your emotions, especially when the whistle blows. What's your thoughts on what happened with Miles Garrett? Can you see why it happened? Oh, man. You had to hit me with this tough one. <laughs> <laughs> you had to get one. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just a really touchy subject. Um, you know, I, th I think stuff like that has been happening um, in this aggressive sport um, throughout time. You know what I mean? It's happened since high school. It's happened since Pop Warner or college. But it's just more controversial when you get into the NFL because, you know, children and, and young kids and people um, that want to play football one day, like, aspire to be like us. And, and we're basically role models to a lot of people in the world. And, um, you know, they see you do the slightest thing wrong, and and uh, it gets blown up just because you're supposed to be, like, a superhero kind of person. You know what I mean? And uh, it's hard to hold anybody to those expectations. And, uh, you know, I hope you know, it gets resolved. How about Pouncey in defending your teammate at that point, once your quarterback has been, you know, hit in the head with a helmet, do you yeah. agree with all bets being off in doing everything you can to defend your teammate, or do you think he might have been out of bounds as well? I mean, I love the passion from him. From You know, that's the one thing you want from an offensive lineman is to protect your quarterback at all times. You know, if you see your quarterback on the ground, you should be the first one over there to help pick him up and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people love to see that passion uh, in protecting somebody. But I think overall there was definitely, you know, some things that were just possibly taken a little too far, and that's the reason why it got, you know, over-escalated. I noticed that after Pouncey went as hard as he did, it didn't seem like anybody from Cleveland had any interest in messing with Pouncey. <laughs> Is that, would that be an accurate statement? <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure. I didn't watch the video that closely, but, I mean, he's a big guy, and he looked like he was going uh, pretty hard. So. <laughs> well, good stuff, Leonard. As I told you, I'm here for you. I just want you to know you have the leverage, every single bit of the leverage, so you're going right. to be able to score big, big, yes, big, sir. I'm telling you. Appreciate that. You got it. Have a good rest of the season. All right, thank you. All right.